By the start of World War II, horsed cavalry seemed to be disappearing from the industrialised armies. World War I had shown that horses were very vulnerable to modern machine guns, rifles and artillery, and with the invention of the tank, many cavalry units began to be converted into mechanised or armoured formations. Horsed cavalry did linger on in a much reduced state in the British and US armies, and also in the German, Soviet, Italian and Japanese forces. During World War II, cavalry still played a limited frontline role, for example the Polish Lancers of 1939, the US cavalry in the Philippines in 1941-42, and the Cossacks who fought on both sides on the Eastern Front. However, by mid-war, the US and British had phased out horse cavalry in favour of machines. However, the horse remained very important for less universally mechanised armies, such as that of Germany, which had hundreds of thousands of horses as transport animals, hauling guns, supplies and equipment, as they lacked sufficient fuel for complete mechanisation of their armed forces. Another four-legged animal played an absolutely vital but largely forgotten role in World War II in support of all the armies, the humble mule. The mule is unique in that the most mechanised armies in World War II, the United States and Britain, nonetheless did have to rely on mules for transport in two theatres. And in this video we will examine how the mule came into its own on the Italian front and in Burma, two vital wartime fronts where the mule became an invaluable asset to ultimate Allied victory. A mule is the offspring of a male donkey, or a jack, and a female horse, a mare. The size of the resulting mule depends on the size of the horse mother. The basic characteristics of the mule are its size and ability to cover ground, inherited from the horse mother, and the endurance and patient disposition of the donkey father. It is noted that mules live longer than horses, and are less obstinate than donkeys, and also more intelligent. Most mules are also infertile. So how much weight can an average mule carry? A lot is the answer. Approximately 20% of its body weight, or 90 kilos, or 200 pounds. They can normally walk about 16 miles or 26 kilometers without resting, with this kind of weight on their backs. Mules have been used as pack animals since ancient times, including in ancient Egypt. In America, George Washington was famous for breeding mules, and such animals became popular draft animals in the 18th and 19th centuries. The militaries of most countries use them, for example the British Indian Army during successive colonial conflicts on the subcontinent. And of course the Americans use them in the American West during the Indian Wars. It was mules that hauled George Armstrong Custer's supplies to his famous showdown at the Little Bighorn in 1876. The fighting in Italy was some of the toughest on the Western Front during World War II. The major problem facing the advancing British and Americans was geography. Italy is very mountainous, with a poor road system. The Germans created strong defensive positions on this high ground, and the campaigns to push north were long drawn out slogging matches, where wheeled and track vehicles often couldn't operate properly. Therefore, mules were pressed into service. The British Army had a long tradition of using mules in India, so colonial mule companies were sent to Italy to assist with moving supplies and ammunition forward. The US had its own mule units in the American West, and these animals were shipped off to Europe and the Far East. In both cases, mules were able to haul massive quantities of supplies to the frontline positions along narrow mountain paths, and in wet and extremely muddy conditions that no modern vehicle could cope with. For example, an infantry regiment required 250 mules a day just to keep it supplied. One interesting point is that no light-coloured animals were permitted, as they would attract German artillery fire. Lighter animals were spray-painted, with a special solution to darken their coats. After the Italian surrender in 1943, nine Italian army pack mule companies joined the Allied forces. Also, French colonial troops fighting in Italy, primarily the Goumiers from Morocco, were adept at using mules. Mules were not throwaway animals. On the contrary, they were highly prized animals that were well cared for by special veterinary teams and animals that the men often formed strong bonds with. 
Whenever possible, British and US troops tried to capture German and Italian mules, knowing their great value to operations in Italy. The other front, where the mule became vital to ultimate victory, was Burma. The long campaign through the mountains and jungles, which had very few roads, meant that mules had to be used in very large numbers to move forward supplies, ammunition and medicines, and were used to bring out the wounded, sick and the dead. Never in the history of warfare has there been so difficult a problem. It's a country that's not fit to live in, much less to maintain a fighting force in for months on end. But it's got to be done, and it's being done. Mule companies could be flown for by Dakota transports to operate in the inaccessible regions of what was an appalling place to fight. In some cases, mules would be dropped by parachute to units in particularly inaccessible areas. The Japanese also used pack mules and even elephants to move their supplies. Sadly, on both fronts, mules were killed or wounded in large numbers as they came under artillery and machine gun fire. Mules were also very useful in the China-Burma-India theatre during behind-the-lines operations. Brigadier Ord Wingate's Chindits, a long-range British penetration force that operated deep behind Japanese lines, used large numbers. Many had their vocal cords cut to prevent them braying and giving British positions away to the Japanese. In spring 1944, 1,400 mules were brought in by glider to work hauling supplies to the Chindits. Their job was to haul supplies, which would be landed subsequently by parachute drop. The US equivalent to the Chindits, Merrill's Marauders, undertook similar missions and had six quartermaster pack mule troops, each troop having 300 mules and 75 men. Sadly, though the soldiers who worked alongside the mules formed close bonds with their animals, higher command did not. At war's end, these animals were disposed of. Any sick animals were destroyed, while the healthy ones were given to China or shipped to Europe and used as part of the Lend-Lease program to friendly governments. One Chinese mule captured in Korea in 1951 by U.S. forces was found to still have its original U.S. Army brand from World War II, where it had served on the Burma front. In Italy at war's end, many mules were often gifted to local Italian farmers to use as draft animals. As I mentioned, in the U.S. Army, mules saw some use in the Korean War, where again terrain was against vehicles but were eventually phased out of service in December 1956. In the British Army, mules survived much longer. A pack transport troop of the Royal Corps of Transport remained operational in the colony of Hong Kong until 1976, used to haul supplies to British and Gurkha forces in the mountainous New Territories along the China border. The mules could haul supplies even when the weather grounded military helicopters, but were eventually got rid of in an effort to save money. But mules haven't quite disappeared from the modern military. The United States Army has been experimenting with using mules once more in the mountains of Afghanistan. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.